Hello and welcome to a video on trigonometric ratios. So we're going to be talking about trig, which is so much fun. Okay, so our learning targets today, given an acute angle of a right triangle, we're going to identify the opposite leg and the adjacent leg. Okay, and remember legs are the sides of the triangle. All right, so in any right triangle, the hypotenuse is opposite of the right angle. Okay, so we know that the hypotenuse is opposite of the right angle. Okay, so CA would be your hypotenuse. I'm going to go ahead and write that. HYP. For each acute angle, one of the triangle's legs is known as the opposite leg, and then one is known as the adjacent leg. Okay, so in our triangle below, we know the hypotenuse is AC. For an acute angle C, I'm going to do this in green. So here's my acute angle C. Side AR is opposite. Okay, so it is opposite. Um, RA is not touching C, etc. And then that means that the remaining side CR or RC has to be the adjacent leg. So let's do that in blue. A, D, J. It's adjacent to it. Okay, so it's physically touching angle C. Okay, so the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side will touch the angle. The opposite is completely the furthest one away from it. Okay. All right, let's take a look at our other triangle. So over here, let's look at our acute angle A. So if my angle is A, then I know the, first off, the hypotenuse is always across from the 90. So I'm going to use the letter H for hypotenuse. So if I'm trying to find the opposite, the opposite of A, change colors, is going to be CR. That's opposite of it because it's physically not touching this angle at all. This side touches, this side touches. CR is the only one that doesn't touch. And that means that the adjacent side is left over adjacent A. RA would be its adjacent. Okay? So the biggest thing in trig is you have to be able to find the hypotenuse, the opposite, and the adjacent side. Okay? If you can do that, trig is going to be a breeze. Okay? All right, so I want you guys, I'll do example one for you guys, and then you'll try, try example two. So, in right triangle BUS, identify the opposite and the adjacent leg for angle U. So first, they do have to tell you the angle in which you start at. So I'm starting at angle U, I'm going to make an angle mark, okay? I know opposite the 90 is always the H, so I always label that first because it's the easiest thing to find. So then the opposite leg is going to be opposite of this angle, so SB or VS, doesn't matter how you write it. If you want to put the side leg over the side symbol over it, you can. I don't know what just happened. Um, and then the adjacent leg is the side that's remaining. It's the one that's left over. It is the one that is touching the angle, and so that would be US or SU. doesn't matter how you write it, okay? So let me know if you have any questions on how to identify the opposite and the adjacent leg, because I want you all to try number two. So see if you can give me all that information. Notice the angles do change. Okay. All right, press pause and try A through E on your own. So here are the answers, RS, SQ, SQ, RS, and RQ. Again, you can have them in reverse order. Um, but the leg opposite of Q would be all the way over there, not touching it, so RS. And then the leg adjacent to Q would be SQ. Notice RQ is also adjacent to angle Q, but it's the hypotenuse, so I can't pick the hypotenuse for adjacent. Um, same thing for R if I'm at angle R. SQ is now opposite, and then RS is adjacent, so they're kind of the same in reverse order. And then, as always, opposite the 90 is going to be your hypotenuse. Okay? So let me know if you have any questions on how to find opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Otherwise, we're going to move on to trig. So we got new learning targets now. Learning targets are understand the definition of sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, calculate trigonometric ratios in a right triangle and describe the relationship between sine and cosine of complementary angles. Okay. 
All right, so, move my face. For each right triangle, the vertex opposite the longer leg has been named with the same letter as the grid. Determine the ratios in the table and write the ratios in lowest terms. Okay, remember ratios is just a fraction. So something over something. Looks like a division sign. That's where it comes from. Okay, so L stands for long side and S stands for short side. So the long side is going to be 8 and then the short side is a 6 and it tells me the hypotenuse is 10. Okay, so I can do that for all of these. My long side is 4, my short side is 3, and my hypotenuse is 5. And then last but not least, my long side is 12, my short side is 9, and my hypotenuse is 15. Okay, so they got those numbers from counting the boxes. Okay, all right, so we're going to fill this table out now. Okay, so I'm going to look at angle A, angle C, and then angle E, and figure out opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so if I'm at angle A, the length of the opposite side is going to be 8 over the length of the hypotenuse, remember here's my 90 degree angle, which is 10. Okay, but it wants me to reduce that fraction and put it in simplest terms, okay? So I'm going to teach you two ways. First, I'm going to show you a shortcut in the calculator. All right, so if you forgot how to do a fraction in the calculator, you're going to hit the green button, so alpha, and then come up here to y equals, and then hit enter. And that's how you get a fraction. And then the calculator will do all the hard work for you if you remember how to put in a fraction to get four fifths. Oops. But how they got that is they simplified the numerator and the denominator. So you have to think about what number goes into an 8 and a 10. Well, I know 2 goes into both of those. So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So my simplified answer is four fifths which is what the calculator gave us, okay? So that's how you can do it using mental math or using your calculator, okay? All right, so now let's move across. So let's find the leg of the adjacent, le length of the adjacent leg. So adjacent to A is six. So six over your hypotenuse, which is 10, okay? I'm gonna do some mental math. I know two goes into both of those, so I'm going to divide them by two to get three fifths. Okay? And then last but not least, I've got the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Okay? So my opposite leg is eight over my adjacent leg, which is six. Okay? Again, eight and six are both divisible by two. So I'm going to divide them both by two to get four. Okay, so I just did angle A for y'all. So again, if this helps you where you write this side as your hypotenuse, this side as your opposite, and this side as your adjacent, if that helps you out to fill out this table, go for it, okay? So you're gonna try angle A and angle E. So tell me the following ratios and make sure you put them in simplest terms. And then we'll go over it. So press pause, try them on your own. So here's what I got. Um, maybe it looks a little cool because they're all four fifths for the first one, they're all three fifths for the middle, and then they're all four thirds for the right side, okay? So that's interesting. So even though I had three different size triangles, their ratios ended up being all the same. We'll talk about why. <laughs> all right, so turn the page. So, no turn the page. Okay, so for each of the following triangles in angle one, use your protractor. Y'all don't have a protractor, so you're just going to believe me that if I measured angle A, angle C, and angle E, so if I took the measurement of this one, and this one, and this one, just trust me, they're going to be 53 degrees. Okay? So, this kind of relates back to similar triangles. So, I had a right triangle. All my sides are proportional, and all my angles are the same. Okay? So, Moving on. So in item two, I found that the measure of each of the three angles are the same, okay? So if 
Another right triangle, the measure of the larger acute angle was the same as A and C and E, what would you expect the following ratios to be? Okay, so what that just means is if I, if I draw another right triangle, okay, so let's draw another right triangle. Um, and I'm doing the same measurement of this angle down here was the same as A and C and E. We found out it was 53 degrees. Okay, what would I expect the following ratios to be? So let's pretend I absolutely know nothing about the side lengths. I would expect that since I have a 90 degree angle, which matched up in my previous problem, I have a 53 degree angle, which matched up in my previous problem, that all these two triangles are similar, so all their ratios should be the same. Okay, so all their ratios should be the same. So in the first one, I had four fifths, opposite over hypotenuse. In the next one, I had adjacent over hypotenuse, so 3 over 5. And then my last one was opposite, so 4 over 3. Okay? So basically that's saying, if I know I have two angles that are the same, then I know my two triangles are similar, and so I know all my proportions are going to be the same. Okay? So that's kind of what I said in number 4. So if one angle of a right triangle is 53, I know the other one has to be 37 because triangles have to add up to 180. But the triangle from item 1 that we did, they're going to be similar because any right triangle, I have one angle, I'll have another angle. So then therefore they're going to be similar by angle-angle similarity. So the ratios are going to be the same because my sides are going to be proportional. Okay? So put that in your own words. But it's basically saying if you have a right triangle and you know the other angle is 53, you know their triangles are similar and therefore their ratios are going to be the same because we know that similarity have the same, similar triangles have the same ratio. Okay? All right. So we're going to stop there. That's going to be part one of the video. This is just kind of reintroducing similar triangles into trig. So tune in for part two where we're going to learn about the trigonometric ratios, okay? Thanks for watching. Watch part two.